every service, it seems like there's a theme, and uh, the Holy Spirit seems to emphasize one thing or another almost in every service, and the choir sung about heaven, and the ladies, our heavenly home, I'm glad that I have the hope of that, and uh, you know, we're right at the end of the age, I believe, and I believe it's shortly before the Lord comes, and I want to encourage you to be faithful and don't drop out, don't kick out, don't let the old devil knock you out. Uh, I believe God's ordained it that you're going to be on the welcoming committee that welcomes our Lord back. And uh, we're living probably in the hardest generation in the history of the church to reach for the gospel. But God raised you up and let you be born at such a time as this. And uh, you have a gift and a talent that you need to contribute and let me encourage you to keep on keeping on and doing what you know to do is right. And when we sit down in the city together, uh, you're going to say thank you, Brother Don, for encouraging me to do that. And uh, I want to. You hang in there. And uh, when it comes down to it, bottom line, there will be a lot of people that will be called out, I think, of Christianity before the end of the age. But uh, I know whom I have believed in, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And uh, we'll be here, the Lord willing, when Jesus comes in the clouds. And so let me encourage you to remain faithful. All right, Luke's Gospel, chapter 21. And in just a moment, I'm going to begin reading in verse number 5. I want to talk to you today about uh, the destruction of the temple. The destruction of the temple. And I want to apply that in a couple of ways uh, when I get finished, and I hope we can make an application to our day. Before I read there, listen carefully as I read a couple of other passages. In Matthew 23 and verse number 37, the Lord Jesus had been in the world, of course, preaching to the nation of Israel for three years. And uh, as he is going into Jerusalem for the last time, uh, he looked out over the city of Jerusalem. And he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how oft would I have gathered thee or gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left under you desolate. I think he's talking about the house of Israel and perhaps that magnificent temple that they were so proud of that without the glory of God, it is a desolate house. The Lord Jesus was the glory of God incarnate, living and dwelling among them and they had made up their mind to reject him. And uh, so Jesus says in verse 39, For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. They were not ready to receive him at that time, but he says there will be a time that uh, you'll be looking for me, and you'll say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So in this passage, uh, he shows us their hardness of heart, he wanted to have compassion on them, but they would not, would not accept him. And he said, there will be a day that you will welcome me. And then just a little bit later, a couple of chapters later, in the 27th chapter of Matthew's gospel, and verse number 25, as Jesus hung on the cross, or was about to be hung on the cross, he went before uh, Pilate, and uh, Pilate, not willing to make a clear-cut decision he took water and washed his hands at his trial and said uh, I'm washing my hands of this I don't want the uh, blood of this innocent person on my hands then answered all the people and said his blood be on us and our children so there they're saying we take full responsibility for the death and the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ hard-hearted Israel. And now I want you to follow along with me. Keep your Bible open here in Luke's Gospel and uh, chapter 21 and verse 5. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, 
As for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Brother Wishon mentioned a moment ago the Mount of Olives, which stands over to the east of Jerusalem. And uh, on, from that mountainside where Jesus was at with his disciples, they had a magnificent view of the city of Jerusalem and, of course, the temple. And that temple had been rebuilt. Uh, Herod spent 46 years in rebuilding and refurbishing that temple. And they said that it was a glorious sight. They said that the marbles were white. It was extremely bright. And there were works of gold on the outside of the building. Said it had grapevines, golden grapevines. It went up the outside of the building and uh, had golden clusters of grape that had been uh, covered uh, with plates of gold. And said that the, the bunches of those grapes was taller than a man is. And so... Uh, the outside of that temple was adorned in gold and uh, very white. And uh, no doubt the disciples of our Lord had expected him to go up to Jerusalem and be accepted of the religious leaders and that they too would walk into that magnificent building with the Lord Jesus Christ where he will one day rule from the throne of his father David. That's promised to him and there will be a day that Jesus was set upon the throne of his father David. But this was not to be the time. He was going to be crucified instead of accepted in the city of Jerusalem. And here Jesus predicts that there would be a day that not one stone in that glorious building would remain upon each other, but it would be thrown down in its entirety. Now that must have shocked the disciples of our Lord. How could such a thing be? And they asked uh, further uh, when those things would take place. And he tells them in the rest of this chapter. But remember now that just 37 years after this. Matter of fact, back up, it could be about 35 years after this. The Roman emperor would send his armies into Jerusalem. The general was Titus. And Titus laid siege to the city of Jerusalem. Uh, in 68 A.D., totally cut off supplies going into and coming out of the cities. And uh, when that happened, uh, the war began. It was just a shooting war all the time. And, of course, the Caesar had given command to Titus, do not let that temple uh, protect that and do not destroy that in the warfare. So the armies are sitting outside the walls of Jerusalem for a two-year period of time, and they're kind of waiting to starve the inhabitants out of the city of Jerusalem. And then on August the 30th of 70 A.D., either mistakenly, uh, by accident, or perhaps on purpose, we don't know if it was the Jews who were still enclosed in the city of Jerusalem, or a stray arrow or something fired by the Romans, but it hit in the temple, and it caused a fire, and it began to burn out of control. They said Titus, who was camped outside the city, ran into the city himself to see what could be done uh, to put out the flames that was now burning in that magnificent temple that Jesus and his disciples are looking at. They soon discovered that the heat was already so immense and hot that they had to withdraw, and this glorious structure that the disciples are showing our Lord uh, in 70 A.D., 37 years after Jesus said it would be thrown down, it actually happened on the 30th of August in 70 A.D. And so they fulfilled the words of our Lord. That gold that was inside and outside the building melted and ran down into the crevice and the cracks of the rock. The Roman soldiers discovered that, and they began to dig out the rocks and the stones uh, and they literally fulfilled the words of our Lord when we said, One stone shall not be left upon the other. And that is the destruction of the city of Jerusalem and the temple in particular in verse number 6. And uh, notice they said in verse 7, They asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And so Jesus goes on, and answers some of their questions. 
and uh, we'll say more about it. And I'm not going to read. I'm just going to go down through the verses and comment as the Lord would help us. Now, Matthew's account of this and what we call the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24, uh, he gives us very much the Jewish side of this and how those things will play out. Now, remember the disciples of our Lord here didn't know about the church age, which has now run for a period of 2,000 years. They wanted to know how that Jewish age was going to end. And so Jesus first predicts the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And he says this in verse number 8, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. In other words, it's not going to be long till there's going to be other people uh, that will come along saying that they are the real Christ. But he said, don't be deceived and don't go after them. Don't be fooled by them. And I have no doubt that in every generation after our Lord lived that there were impersonators who came along claiming to be the Savior of Israel. And I think that's been pretty much the history of Israel down through many centuries. One day in the future, and I don't believe it to be far off, there's going to be another uh, false Christ that's going to present himself not only to Israel but to the world. It's going to be the Antichrist. He's going to have a lot of answers to problems that people are looking for today. And I promise you this deceived, deluded world that we live in will accept that man wholesale. So that warning uh, is alive and well in our day. Don't be deceived by them, he says to these Jewish disciples. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions. And, uh, you know, we hear of wars, don't we? Seems like the world's on the brink of war this morning. I don't know what the little rocket man over in North Korea intends to do. He's firing new rockets all the time. Uh, you know, war has never... Uh, officially ceased between North Korea and South Korea when that was fought back in the 50s. They just had a truce, and that truce is held. But little rocket man's fired off rockets. He'd like to take over the rest of the southern part of the uh, Korean peninsula. Have no doubt about that. China has got its eyes on Taiwan and other places as well. They're not going to be satisfied with just Taiwan. So that's a big one right there, isn't it? What about Russia in Ukraine this morning? Well, there's wars and rumors of wars that are going around all over our world. And Jesus said that this would uh, be the precursor for coming events. You shall hear of wars and commotions. Now, the word commotions there means disestablishments and any other kind of unsettlements. In other words, uh, traditions and things that have been long established and uh, well settled are going to find itself in turmoil. Uh, you don't have to think any farther than the financial markets of our day, do you? To find out that there is an uneasiness in the financial markets and the economies of all the world. It's like that in the religious world. I've never seen a time when it seems like there seems to be so much religious confusion in our world, we witness that, don't we? And we see it, and it will get progressively worse. Uh, he said, when you hear of all these things, be not terrified. Now, I think that Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's saying to them, these are things, fellas, that you're going to see come to pass in your lifetime. He's not looking way down the road here to when you and I live but in that day, there'd be all kinds of commotions and all kinds of distress. He said, but the end is not uh, yet, but it'll be by and by. And verse number 10, then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Now, during the time when our Lord uttered this to 70 A.D., many of those things did come to pass. There were national wars, kingdom rising against kingdom. There was a great earthquake during the days of Claudius Caesar. And notice he said there were famines as well, and there was pestilences or disease. And notice this, and fearful sights. 
It's not only in what they would see with their own eyes and behold, but fearful things were happening. And no doubt they were filled with fear, these Jewish disciples of our Lord who heard Jesus predict that this would come to pass and they lived in their lifetime to see Jerusalem besieged and all the turmoil and the difficulty that happened during that time. Uh, if you're a great student of history, I know that you're probably with the writings of Josephus. And Josephus tells us that after the Romans breached the city walls of Jerusalem and the uh, temple began to burn, that it was just a matter of a few days before they completely took over the city. They crucified Jews till there was not a piece of wood big enough upon which to crucify a person. Uh, strange, isn't it? 37 years after they called for the crucifixion of our Lord, and those people said, His blood be upon us and our children. 37 years later, it was upon them, and they died in the same manner in which they crucified their Messiah. And they were killed by the thousands and thousands starved to death uh, during that time. Matter of fact, there were many wounded, there were many older folks, there were many diseased people, and they said that when they run out of wood to crucify them on, that the Roman soldiers went by, through and with swords and spears killed the remaining people that were there. 97,000 young men were taken out of the city of Jerusalem and made captives by the Romans when the city of Jerusalem fell in 70 A.D. And the disciples of our Lord lived to hear those words confirmed exactly as Jesus predicted they would come to pass. Now, I don't know about you folks. There's a lot of prophecies in the Old Testament that our Lord fulfilled in His birth and in His death and in His resurrection. But if that were not enough, here our Lord says to His disciples, here's what's going to happen further confirming their faith that he was a son of God and that everything that he said could be believed. And so when we read this far in the scripture and we can look back in history and see it, I want to say to us in our day that we can believe what God says in his Bible. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm not going to lose my faith in what God has said. Politicians may tell us what we want to hear, but I want to tell you something. God tells it like it is. And we're living in such a day that we need to be assured that everything, I promise you, is in the control and in the hands of a sovereign good God. We are His people saved by His grace, and He will never leave us nor forsake us. And so... Praise God with that, I'm going to keep reading. Now, I want to tell you something. That excites me right there. I'm not kidding you. There's a lot of things that I can rejoice in, but I rejoice in the fact that our Lord said it was going to happen. It's going to happen. He said to us that He's going to come again and receive us unto Himself, that where He is, we may be also. He will keep that promise. Now notice, he's talking to these Jewish men still. And he says in verse 12, But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you. In other words, he said before this temple is destroyed, fellas, here's what's in store for y'all on a personal level. They shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into the prison. You'll be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Did that happen? Why, absolutely. The earliest, the fourth chapter of the book of Acts, they threw them in prison. They beat them, and they said, don't preach anymore in Jesus' name. And you know what they did? They just kept right on preaching. Better to obey a man, a God, than man. And they just kept right on preaching the truth. Well, they threw some of them in jail, didn't they? Uh, they certainly uh, threw Peter in jail in the 12th chapter of the book of Acts. And you get to the 16th chapter, there's Paul and Silas there in jail and singing God's praise in the midnight hour. And so all of uh, our Lord's apostles would ultimately face a martyr's death with the exception of John the Apostle. And so what Jesus says to them actually comes true as well. 
And notice he said in verse 13, it shall turn to you for a testimony. Paul said when writing to the churches, he said, why, in every place the gospel is made known, even in Caesar's household. And so that happened. Notice he said in verse 14, Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor to resist. And we read about that also in the book of Acts. And notice this, verse number 16, Ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And that actually has happened in history as well. And I don't know but what we won't see more of that as we get closer to some of these things that I'll talk about in just a little bit come to pass. Did you know that during Nazi Germany, uh, the uh, Nazi propagandists were uh, very successful in, uh, what do they call that when somebody gets radicalized? They were very successful in rad- radicalizing many people throughout Germany. And uh, they joined the SS, and they joined in, and they really supported what Hitler was doing. And they radicalized them by the propaganda that they put out, uh, insomuch that sometimes families were torn apart. And uh, they were turned in to the authorities. And they was turned in by their own countrymen, and sometimes by their own family members. And so that speaks of family disruption. I think we've seen a little bit of that during the covid stuff that we've just been through while neighbors reporting other neighbors for going out during the lockdown and the quarantines and oh they didn't have a mask some people just absolutely have a meltdown if you wasn't aware in a mask and they'd report you to the authorities you remember right in the beginning of that stuff uh they'd come out and pay you a visit they caught you out in certain big cities uh after certain times during the quarantine period well i can imagine a day very easily in the future to where through propaganda that people become radicalized. And if you name the name of Christ, then you'll be hated uh, by those that are around you, even turning families one against the other. I can see that very clearly in our society today, can't you? And I don't want to get off on too much of that old stuff. I want to hurry and get on down through here. But notice this. He says, but there shall not an hair Uh, of your head perish in other words God's going to be with his disciples and he's going to help them he said in in your patience possess ye your souls or literally you shall win your souls that is Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 13 where Jesus said to the Jewish people uh, he that endures to the end of the tribulation period the same shall be saved in other words there will be many Jews that will be persecuted they'll even be put to death But you know, the Antichrist will not succeed in his campaign to wipe Israel off of the face of the map. There's going to be a remnant that is going to be preserved during the tribulation period, and they shall see their Messiah come in his second advent in power and great glory, and they'll be saved as a nation at that time. So that's what he's talking about, verse number 19. Verse 20, And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now he's speaking again to his disciples, and he's saying, you will see this come to pass. Ye shall see it in verse number 20. Uh, You'll know that the desolation or the destruction thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. You know why that was? Because the armies of Titus would have the city completely surrounded and sealed off. Don't try to go into Jerusalem. You'll fare better if you flee out of the city. And many of the residents of Jerusalem did flee out, and they fled across the Jordan River to a place called Pella. And that's where they remained until after the uh, siege during 70 A.D., and they were spared, including the apostles of our Lord. Now notice this, if you will, in uh, verse number uh, 22. For these be the day of vengeance. Now notice that word vengeance. In other words, these be the days of full 
justice, if you will. The people of Israel were getting what they asked for. They wouldn't have Jesus to rule over them. And they said, let his blood be upon us and our children. And he's saying, you asked for it. Now here it is. You got it. And that was visited upon them during that siege and the destruction of Jerusalem. Verse 23, but woe unto them that are with child because Pregnant woman would be slowed down, unable to flee, and to them that give suck, or that is breastfeeding in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, this people Israel. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, which they did, the 97,000 that were taken prisoner after the fall of the city. And they were taken captive, Jewish people, into all the nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles under the fullness of the, uh, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, this is not recorded in Matthew's gospel, but it is recorded here in Luke's gospel, the gospel to the Gentiles. And what's he saying there? That Israel will continue to be subservient to the Gentile world powers. Now notice he said, shall be trodden down of the Gentiles under the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now what are the times of the Gentiles? Let me go over that very quickly and I'm going to give, them, give you about two points and we'll go home. The times of the Gentiles actually began when Nebuchadnezzar captured the nation of Israel and took them into the Babylonian captivity back in the Old Testament times. And uh, we know that he went in. He, too, destroyed the city of Jerusalem. I know I should know this, but I cannot recall the exact year. But I do know the exact date, the exact date that Nebuchadnezzar burned the first, more glorious Solomon's temple was on the 30th day of August as well. Isn't it strange that on the 30th day of August in 70 A.D., the temple was destroyed again? You reckon God had a hand in that? Probably so. I thought that was a great coincidence. But the times of the Gentiles began when uh, Israel was taken captive by the Babylonians. And remember, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had that dream, and he couldn't tell what it was. He couldn't remember it. And the head was of gold, the shoulders and the arms were of silver and the belly and thighs of brass and the legs of iron what that was was the four great gentile world powers that were to come nebuchadnezzar was the first and then of course after him there'd be men like belshazzar darius and the medes and the persians under Darius. they were the uh, shoulders of silver and the arms of silver uh, inferior but they would come after them and then finally you have uh, the belly and thighs that were of brass that spoke of Alexander the Great and the Grecian Empire. And then after them, it fell to the Romans. When the Lord Jesus was in the world, the nation of Israel was under Roman domination at that time. And by the way, the Antichrist is going to come out of a revived Roman Empire. That's the legs of iron and the toes of clay that Daniel spoke about. And during the tribulation period, he's going to come and set up his kingdom on the earth. But I got news for him. At the end of the seven years of tribulation period, the stone cut out without hands that Daniel saw is none other than the Lord Jesus. And he's coming to smite the image upon its feet. And Gentile world domination will fall subservient to our Lord during the millennial reign. And uh, so that's going to be the end of the four Gentile world powers. But folks, this world is still under the domination, basically, of the old Roman Empire. It'll be revived during the tribulation period, but our Lord is coming back to deal with that as well. So that's the times of the Gentiles. Started with Nebuchadnezzar, and they will not end until the Lord comes back at his second advent to set up his own kingdom. And that is the end of the times of the Gentiles. Now notice very quickly, and my goodness, I've got to hurry. Verse 25. And this is more related, I think, uh, to uh, the second advent of our Lord. 
says in verse 25, And there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity. The word perplexity there means that it is no way out, there is no solutions, and the nations of the earth are at wit's end. They will not know what to do. The sea and the waves roaring. And I'd like to spend a little more time right there. You know, this old earth almost is in upheaval and revolt against some of the things that are happening. The wickedness of man is going to get worse and worse. And it's promised to do that before our Lord comes. Verse 26, men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Boy, we see so much in our society and in our world. And it seems like we're bombarded on every side by bad news. And it will get worse. Men's heart actually stopping out of fear of those things that they see happening on the earth. And notice it will, verse 27, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Now, I want to say just a word about all that I've said. Some of this stuff is yet future, and we're not going to be here during the tribulation. I still believe that the church is going to be raptured before the tribulation period begins. I don't know who the Antichrist is going to be, and I don't care who it is. I don't know what the mark of the beast is, and I don't care because I'm going to be gone, out of here gone when that happens. But it's going to happen, and uh, I'm going to heaven. But listen to this, folks. If we can see that coming to pass, if we can already in our world see how that these very things that I've read about could very easily come to pass, and they'll culminate during the tribulation period, Okay, let's just back off now seven years, pull seven years off of that. And I think surely we are at the threshold of the second coming of our Savior for the rapture of the church. And we're getting out of here. I can very well see that in uh, the text that I read this morning. A couple of things I want to say about that. You can't reject God and get away with it. Israel said crucify him, let his blood be on us and our children. And it was. And if you reject the Son of God as your Savior, I promise one day you'll stand before him as your judge. And uh, then the second thing is we see what's coming. And as Brother Bud mentioned so well a while ago, when Jesus comes back, his foot's going to sit down on the Mount of Olives. And like Brother Bud said a while ago, him and the entourage of all of heaven, and we as the saints of God, that old eastern gate that was sealed up long ago, now listen, that thing's being rebuilt over there, and there's actually a wall over there, and there's a gate called the eastern gate, and she's been sealed up. But I'll tell you something, in that day, it's going to be opened, and the Son of God's going to go into the city of Jerusalem, and then Israel is going to say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Israel will accept their Messiah, their Lord, and their King. I'm happy about that. Amen. That's going to happen as sure, I think more sure than I'm standing here this morning. That's what the Bible says. Stand to our feet, please. Our heads are bowed. Eyes are closed.